Well, good morning. Welcome back to Talking Racine. And I say good morning because these are always released on Monday morning, and sometimes I haven't been real cognizant of that fact. We'll say good evening to our audience because these are taped in the late afternoon or the evening. So we're good. we're saying good night. And actually, it's hi. Good morning. Welcome to the day. <laughs> so we got Mr. George Myers here. Morning. Mr. Jim Spotick, our producer, and I'm Dr. Ken Jorgen, your host. And we got an issue to discuss here today, which is very timely. And uh, it goes back to a problem that was brought before the City Council recently. Uh, and the problem actually began in 2012 when an employee was hired by the city for a managerial position. Managerial, as in, you know, looking after other folks, managing them, being the boss. That position and the person that occupies it are in no way going to be revealed here. It's not important. What's important is <clears throat> in October of 2015, that's three years after the hiring, Alderman Sandy Widener received information that there was disqualifying, disqualifying hiring information about that individual who was hired. And there were people that knew that information. Some of those people were, at the very least, Mayor John Dickert, City Administrator Tom Friedel, and City Attorney Scott Letney. Now, that information was withheld from the City Council when the recommendation was made to them to hire this individual. Okay, now, as I said, in October of 2015, Alderman, Re Alderman Widener received this information, so she brings it to the Finance and Personnel Committee for discussion. Because what's happening here is an employee hiring practice which has been set down by the city. In other words, there are guidelines, there are rules and regulations, and those were violated when this particular individual was hired. So she brought it to the information of the Personal and Finance Committee for discussion because if anyone who was not given that preferential treatment finds out that somebody else was, that opens up the city to a discrimination suit. And you know how discrimination suits go. If they're lost, the city has to pay money. And you know what happens when the city pays money. It comes out of your pocket and money. mine. So in the interest of protecting the citizens, she wanted to go to the Finance and Personnel Committee for discussion, get this cleared up. Personnel and Finance voted to receive and file. Receive and file is like the black hole of legislation. You know, that means we got it, we ain't going to talk about it, it's over. Put it in the file cabinet. Yeah. Right. That doesn't resolve the issue. It covers the issue up. Sweep it under the carpet. Kick the can down the road. Man, oh man. Now, in August of 2017, an executive committee was set up to examine Alderman Widener's emails because somebody got a bee in their bonnet about her even talking about this incident. And in September of 2017, the Common Council moved to forward the ex to the executive committee a... Wait a minute. Moved to forward the executive committee recommendation, I'm sorry, to the Ethics Committee. Well, that's that's a very powerful sounding thing. It's like, oh my God. And when that gets out in the public, oh, this person is being recommended for consideration for an ethics violation. Now that's already gone out in the newspaper. Right. So we want to address that because this is something that can very seriously impact what we've got going on here right now, which is a mayoral election. It's coming up, uh, is it a week from uh, Tuesday? Yes. Right, yep. which would be a week from tomorrow in the time that you're watching this, if you watch it on Monday, Wednesday. Eight days. Yeah. Eight days. days you're watching. Okay, so I, right now we're going to watch this clip, right, which this yeah, is uh, the Common Council. Why don't you lay the groundwork for what this clip is? This actually. is back on uh, November 3rd, 2015. This is when um, this, is, this item was given, this information was given to Alderman Widener. She then took it to personnel and they received and filed it, you know, basically saying, hey, we don't, oh boy, you know, a major issue like this should have been brought out, discussed within that committee, and then a recommendation should have been made. And it should have been made a lot differently than a receive and file. <clears throat> it goes back now to the Common Council that has to ratify the receive and file from the finance and personnel. It's it's on the floor now, and this is the discussion back I would, in I would 2015. Just like, yeah. I would just like to just say one point of clarification. 
anytime something comes like from one of us citizens, it first goes to a committee, and then the committee makes a recommendation, and it goes to the council. So this is the normal flow normal of things. Flow. There's nothing unusual about right. this. It goes to the committee. Committee makes a recommendation. Recommend that recommendation goes to the council for final disposition. Correct. And the recommendation in this case was to receive and file. Correct. So that's 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 where we're. It, it now it's being brought up to the common yeah. council. Okay. Got Correct. It. Okay, we're gonna play it here and we'll, we'll just. 0929, Alderman Shakur. Move for adoption, Your Honor. Second. Motion to second, Alderman Shakur. Thanks again, Your Honor. Item 1500929, this is a communication from the Alderman of the 6th District asking to meet in closed session with the Finance and Personnel Committee pursuant to Wisconsin Statutes 1985, paren 1, paren C, for the purpose of considering employment or performance evaluation data of a particular public employee over whom the governmental body has jurisdictions or exercise responsibility. Recommendation is to receive and file. Now you notice this period of quietness. <laughs> the lack of sound, folks, is, is not our equipment. It's the mayor and the city council doing a little discussion up there. A little we're, gonna our, the we're gonna ask our legal counsel to weigh in at this time. Uh, just remind everyone that, that this was an issue that was discussed in closed session because it's something that is required to be discussed in closed session. So uh, there can be no discussion of the specifics of the issue as relate to the employee that was discussed. Speaker, we have is Alderman Widener. Now, before before Alderman Widener speaks, <clears throat> this is a this is the cover up. This is the this is the <laughs> shutdown. You know, this mm -hmm. is we can't talk. You can't bring up any names. You can't talk. Well, basically, we can't talk about anything because it's an issue that they really don't want revealed. They're, 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 they, they were calling it confidential. Yeah. Doc, I believe you had a good... Uh, another C word. Yeah, yeah. Cover up. A little difference between confidentiality and cover up. Confidentiality means could mean everything's legitimate. In other words, there's, there's social security numbers, medical records, blah, 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 whatever involved, and it's, it's, it's supposed to be kept confidential. But when it's illegal activities or activities against the rules, then it's no longer confidential, just confidential. It's a cover-up, also, which which we feel is what we're looking at right exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah. And that, that, that little that little quiet period there, where the mayor was talking with the with the city attorney, was um, uh, do we get to talk about this or they're, not? They're pulling we, the sheets yeah, up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Should we pull the shades down real quickly? Yeah, How right. do we do it? How, How do we do yeah. this? We and and now you're going to get an. Exp now, yeah, the thing about this now it. is that what's happening here in 2015 is now uh, is is now being re. Uh, initiated in 2017 yeah. to keep Alderman Widener quiet about situations that has as you know now we attack her to keep her to keep her quiet All right now she's gonna talk thank you I'm gonna speak against a motion to receive and file this item um, the discussion regards it regarding an individual was really peripheral to the real issue which is uh, administration's failure to adhere to the own rules that it has created. We have uh, an employee manual handbook that is authorized by the city, uh, city council under state statutes, and it is administered by the Human Resources Department. You just bear with me for a moment. I'm just going to... Um, read to you a couple excerpts from the handbook. The city of Racine has established these policies and its rules of conduct and furtherance of the effective operation of the city and to provide high quality service to all Racine citizens. The purpose of these policies is also to reduce misunderstanding, promote uniformity of policy throughout the city and provide employees with a clear outline of benefits and responsibilities. Compliance with these policies, rules and general expectations of conducts is important in order to fill these objections. Failure to comply with the policies spelled out herein is taken seriously by the city. Violations of these policies, rules, and general expectations of conduct can subject an employee to discipline up to and including discharge. The reason I read these is because we created these rules and I do not believe that the administration has the authority to pick and choose which of the rules that it's going to adhere to. Now there is a very so, important, that's a 
very important statement there, and, and that, there's where you see the fairness of Alderman Widener in action. She's saying we, the, this, the city attorney, and I don't know if you notice in the background why she's talking, the, the city attorney and the mayor are still going on with her discussion. How are we going to handle this? Yep. Well, you know, this, this is right. getting hot. Mm -hmm. And, and <clears> she <throat> says we, that the, this council does not have the authority to pick and choose between which rules it's going to follow and which ones it's going to let slide. And that is absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you want fairness for everyone, you treat, you, you treat everyone the same under the rules and regulations. That's a that's a, the founding principle of this country. Well, her her uh, her her reprimand was really directed at the administration. Okay, okay, yeah. right, right, right. Not a, not yeah, council. They, they, right, and, right. The and, council had nothing to do with that with that picking and choosing. Yeah. that was it. Being now in the, the administration, the right. council is now being recruited into the cover up. Is what's happening. <laughs> But uh, initially, her reprimand was to the administration, which would right. be the mayor, the attorney, and the uh, right. city administrator. Yeah, the, that was uh, the people that were involved with it. Was, it you, you say, let's say it clearly, it was the mayor, the administrator, and the city attorney. Those are the three people that got involved with picking and choosing. It was right. not the council exactly. at this point. <clears throat> exactly. So that is the reason why I'm hoping that my colleagues will take seriously uh, the actions of this administration and vote against receiving and filing this request from the Alderman of the 6th District. The actions of the administration. Right. All right. Yep, she lays it out. Yeah. And, and, and <clears throat> at this point, they're going to receive and file it. There's right. a couple comments we'll go through. But the fact is now this action today is affecting the... Uh, uh, I, I guess you would say the election in a week from now. It or be, it's, it's, been, it's been brought up to. Yeah. to you, you, they need there's something. There's been little little things going around, circulating, and kind of in a whisper type of thing about uh, ethics uh, actions taken against Sandy Widener. Right. And and this this you're you're getting into the meat of what it is right now, and that's what that's what we're looking at, and and that and it, that's why it's being brought forward now. It's been held in abeyance. Waiting for a nice prime time to 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 release it, like you know. Well, that's what we suspect. That's that's what. That's <laughs> well, I mean, they've already and made it, the motions it, to it do this. It kind of looks that way. Yeah. You know. So. Alden Weiser, I would just like to take to this opportunity to remind other council members that under Act 10 and as spelled out in our employee handbook, uh, the city council has a new and unique responsibility relative to personnel issues. Too much. This is all. This is Alderman Weiser at the time, now Mayor Weiser, uh, <laughs> saying that Act 10 allows us to pick and choose between who we're going to uh, the administration, who it's going to uh, you, uh, prosecute, or whoever it's going to take action against, right. and who it can let ride, which is totally ridiculous. Well, what he's saying in effect <laughs> is, it enables us to discriminate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, we'll discrimin discrimination is now in our power to do because we'll, of Act 10. And we'll discriminate uh, whichever way we choose. Yeah, and, and we think we should well, receive information. Wonderful and thinking. In case you've ever wondered what's going on in City Hall, you're seeing it now. It's, 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 well, here's it's, the thing I think that people get sometimes, and I mean, I have to listen to it a couple times because I'm thinking, what? I mean, it is so polished mumbo jumbo that it's you start to think. Oh, got a very calm, say? reassuring tone. Reassuring. Yeah. I'm going to make sure that we take you up that road and, you know, you're going to trap you right off the cliff, but you're going to like it on that, tra yeah. on that trail. Enjoy the ride down. Enjoy the ride. <laughs> I was like, you know, you got to think about this for a minute. Act 10, That's blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Nothing to see here, folks. Everybody go home. Move along. Move along. Yeah. Unbelievable. Cover up, cover up. In the handbook, as demanded, as required by Act 10, we are the, the final court that sits in judgment on personnel issues. There are dispute resolution processes spelled out in the handbook. Our role is at the very end of those processes. If a grievance is filed and not otherwise resolved, we can be asked to sit in judgment on that grievance. For us to have any involvement that renders a... Uh, that is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. We have to sit in judgment on the grievance. Therefore, we can't be the ones discussing it because we only make the decision. Wait a second. Well, in his defense, <laughs> you know, facts could alter your, your viewpoint. So it's yeah, best not to be exposed to them. Let's yeah, not yeah, have yeah. any facts. <laughs> let's not have the facts. Because that may that, alter that, my that, actual decision. Let's receive yeah. and file the facts. Yeah. yeah. And that's what that's, they're doing. We already got our mind made up. Don't confuse us with the facts. It's just amazing that this is a reason for the council to not discuss this is because we have to make the final decision. 
Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it sure sure sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> it's almost poetic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Opinions short of the final judgment would jeopardize our ability to sit in final judgment on any dispute. Thank you. Alderman Shakur. Alderman Shakur. There was. He, yeah, he repeated it. You yeah. know, I, I can't <laughs> Understanding jeopardizes your ability to yeah. <laughs> we can't, we can't. understand. Hey, oh my God. Um, Thank you, Your Honor. This is some very serious, serious business. And at this point, um, the uh, Finance and Personnel Committee voted unanimously to receive and file. And I would strongly urge and recommend that we all do the same. This is imperative that we let this be on the receive and file docket. Thank you. What was his major argument? The it's, committee had all voted yeah. to receive and file. In other words, just rubber stamped this well, he's one, the head folks. of the committee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said, don't yeah, do yeah. nothing, because I know this guy. This, this, oh, this is one God. of those cases. It was a unanimous decision at the committee. Just stamp it. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, Who's got that vote? <coughs> Somebody's got that vote there. Oh, we all got it here. This is... Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Got... Bum, 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 bum. Now, who voted was... to receive and file this? Uh, just about everybody. Molly right? Jones, Michael Shields. Jim, Jim Kaplan, Kaplan, Ray DeHaan, uh, Q.A. Shakur, Terry McCarthy, Dennis Weiser, Mary Land, Jim Morgan Roth, uh, Ron, Hart. Ron Hart, and Melissa Lemke. And the people that voted against receiving and filing were uh, Jeff Coe. Surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Steve Smetana, <laughs> Sandy Widener, and uh, Henry Perez. So they were outnumbered 11 to 4. Uh, but I think you know now. Now let's let's move it up now to 2017. So now, uh, Alderman Widener is called. Uh, there's an executive committee called by uh, Attorney Letney to have her come in and discuss. Well, it's to discuss emails that were confidentially released to I don't know constituents, people, well, I guess whoever, but. These emails then were released, and they needed to discuss them, so they called an executive committee meeting. And in this executive committee meeting, I mean, almost all the aldermen were there. So apparently what happened in there was they did a PowerPoint program, and they brought through uh, Alderman Widener's emails. Basically, it was a, uh, we're going to shun you from the committee because you're releasing information. This has been going on for a while, uh, and what they're saying is, we want no information from the the information that aldermen receive to be given to the public. That's bottom line. Everything now has a attorney-client privilege uh, type of uh, needs uh, to be cleared uh, through the city attorney's right. office. Everything has to be cleared, and none of this information we want. And I'm going to just say what I think is happening is you've got young older persons on there, and I mean some of them I mean are just wet behind the ears, and they're buffaloed by this stuff. That attorney is an employee of you. I mean, you are a, a representative of the community. With that information you have, and I remember, and there's an article that went through the paper, the city's business is the people's business. And that is the foundation of, 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 the, of freedom and yeah, open yeah, government. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I have a question. How, how did this get to the Journal Times? Because the Journal Times came up with a headline. <laughs> I see that. I don't, yeah, I don't know that. I, I see that. They came up with, and, I, and I'll... I'll run it across the screen, but um, the public relations branch of uh, the city council, or the, not the know. not the council, but the uh, city I don't administration. Know. But the, the the fact is now <clears throat> they're going to review these these um, emails and you know see if they've been uh, if there's some ethics violations by releasing information. Well, we have gotten some information as to why they're so concerned about this. It's not so much that the information is being released that you know. Uh, this, there's a meeting here, or and uh, there's there's different committee meetings going to happen at a different time. I mean that is not confidential information, and, and very rarely do they find confidential information aldermen that have to keep that information quiet. But it's because of of uh, the damage that some of this information cause uh, individuals outside of this uh, employee, and and I think that's where the yeah. real. Well, this is a story that's developing. We're, right. We we uh, pretty much got our heads wrapped around it. There's there's uh, some details that we want to be absolutely certain of before we uh, release anything further. But I'll tell you, it's it's real close to release time here, and uh, we want to wrap this thing up and put a ribbon on it and deliver it to you. So. Um, 
I hope you found this interesting. Did you guys have any other further comments? I think we've pretty much informed our our viewers of what the heck is going on with this yeah. this, this big ethics issue. Right. And uh, there's there's not much more, but there are some fine details. And like I said, we want to you know put it in a package so you can just really easily digest it. That sounds good to me. Okay. Yeah. Well. Uh, Say good morning to the nice people, George. <laughs> good morning again, folks. And Have a nice day. Yes. We'll see you Thank again you. soon. Thanks.